Have you ever seen this photo in real time, either as a student or as a teacher? Coming from the perspective of someone who has taught for six years, this can be a teacher's worst nightmare because obviously teachers want students to feel excited about the lesson and engaged in the lesson and wanting to just learn as much as they can from you and their peers. But unfortunately, a lot of times students do not come into the classroom ready to learn, but instead their mind is elsewhere and they quickly become disengaged in the lesson. They start looking for other avenues to become entertained during the lecture, such as doodling on their paper or poking someone right next to them, or a lot of times, as you can see from my title here, cell phones. I have seen this time and time again in the different buildings that I have taught at where there are many students that own cell phones and want to use them during class to entertain themselves either with social media or with playing video games and different um, videos that are out there on their cell phones to entertain themselves. And cell phones, obviously, as we can know, are one of technology's greatest inventions, but they're also a teacher's greatest nemesis. And they can become a distraction that has proven to be a major obstacle for teenagers in their learning process. And why is this the case? Well, because teenagers are literally addicted and they rely heavily on their mobile device and they feel compelled to check for social updates as well as contacting their family and their friends. Because of this dependence, many teenagers feel the need to pull out their phones during classroom instruction. And this has caused a major distraction to not only the user, but also the students around him or her during class. The moonwalking bear clip that was posted on YouTube several years ago was made to help drivers become more aware of cyclists on the road. I wanted to make this point and to describe this video to show that everyone can be distracted no matter what the situation is. In this video clip, you'll see a team that is playing basketball and they are going to make a certain number of passes. The person watching the video is asked to decide and figure out how many passes are made by the team. They are so focused on the ball being passed that they miss this guy in a bear costume doing a moonwalk across the middle of the screen. And I really believe that oftentimes teenagers, when they are in class, they miss important points of the lecture because they are so focused on being distracted by their cell phones. During a recent study, it was reported that 66% of teens surveyed out of 2,000 U.S. students ranging from the ages of 8 to 18 years old owned a cell phone. Studies have also shown that 74% of college students rely heavily on their cell phones while attending college. With the rise of cell phones, schools across America are seeing that they're becoming a common use for texting, receiving calls, sending, looking at inappropriate material, cyberbullying, and cheating. As you can see from this picture, this teenager is clearly not invested in the discussion, but rather occupied by a cell phone. Cell phones are often used for various purposes in the classroom, and one of those purposes is for teenagers to text their friends. Research has shown that 94% of students received texts during class and 86% texted during classroom instruction. A study was conducted in 2010 to college students on a university campus. The researchers found that students did worse on a test when a ringing cell phone disrupted the exam. Students that were in the control group also taking the exam did not experience the ringing cell phone and, surprise, surprise, they scored significantly higher because they could focus and keep their con concentration. After the experimental design, the researchers asked the students if they felt like their academic performance had suffered due to the result of the cell phones in class. Surprisingly, only 8% said that it had a negative effect. 11% reported that the other student cell phones use negatively affected their own academic performance and 31%
reported that they had missed important information during the lecture because of the cell phone use. Cell phone distraction goes much further than just a phone ringing in class. In 2009, researchers found that familiar ringtones cause longer distraction periods as a student will begin to think of the lyrics of the song instead of being in the moment with the lecture. The researchers also found that as students are anticipating a phone call during instruction, they are distracted by waiting to answer their phone before their ringtone goes off and creates a distraction for a long period of time in class. For an example of this, in my class, every year I do a little study of my students where I play them familiar sound clips of either movies or TV shows. And every year, without fail, the majority of the class can identify the name of the movie or the TV show just based on the music. And it would make sense that this research shows that familiar ringtones really are distracting in class as lyrics automatically come to our brains and we become unfocused from the lecture and what is happening during class instruction. In another study, texting was found to be a distraction in high school as peers show other peers their texts that are often including inappropriate images. Teachers find it difficult to instruct students when multiple students are involved with looking at inappropriate material. Often, many students become distracted by the incident of showing inappropriate material and teachers have a hard time gaining the attention of the students back into the lecture. Students have become skilled in their ability to switch their screen from one background to another. I see this often in my own classroom. For example, a teacher may notice that several students are looking at someone's phone and the teacher will then obviously proceed to walk towards those students only to find that the student has switched out of that screen and is appearing to be on task with the classroom material when really it's just one swipe away to go back to that material and to be distracted yet again. As we have just mentioned about swiping screens back and forth to hide material, some students have found other ways to use their cell phones to look at these images during classroom instruction and to hide them. As a current teacher, I've seen the effects of how inappropriate material has damaged the minds of many teenagers. Uh, a lot of these teenagers I've interacted with feel depressed, they're insecure, because of their addiction to look at these inappropriate images and to be continuing this behavior. For example, about six months ago, I came across a young man who was in my class looking at inappropriate images of women. When he could sense that I was coming close behind him, he quickly closed down his screen and proceeded to pretend that he was not using his phone. I had to write to his parents and inform them of the material that he was looking at and make them aware of the distractions that he was causing in class not only to himself but also his peers that would be sitting right next to him looking at what he was looking at and pulling away from our discussion in class. In a 2015 study, researchers discussed that 4% of teens in a specific survey were sending inappropriate material and 15% had received such material. Many students have disabled the ability to block material on their cell phones and they can therefore receive and send images to their friends without their parents or legal guardians being aware. This obviously has caused alarm not only in the classroom but also to parents in the home. There is a teenager that I have interacted with that had figured out how to disable the security on their phone so that they could look at this pornography without their parents knowing of their behavior late at night. And this teenager would spend just hours in the middle of the night in their bedroom just looking at this material. And a study that was completed in 2013 indicated that teenagers spend 7 hours and 48 minutes per month looking at videos. And not necessarily pornographic videos, but just media in general on their cellular devices. And the research indicated that adults, on the flip side of this, ages 25 to 34, 
only view videos for five hours and 20 minutes. As noted, cell phones use um, specifically for media is a major tool for entertainment among teenagers and these are a lot of hours that adults and teenagers are using but specifically teenagers to look at media on their phone and to be distracted by the videos and the images that they see. Another distraction with cell phones in the school systems is that other students feel threatened and they're not motivated to come to school because of cyberbullying. Cyberbullying has become a rising problem in and outside of school, unfortunately. As a high school teacher, I have seen how mean and judgmental teenagers can be to each other. Often, teenagers will not only exclude another individual, but they will proceed to harass them by using their cellular devices in the classroom. Many of us are familiar with the movie Mean Girls. This movie that was produced in 2004 was inspired by a true story of a girl named Phoebe Prince. Phoebe was harassed by many of her peers and eventually led to her suicide. I've also known of students that received threats on their phone and messages of degrading words from their peers in their class. There have been a lot of times when I've been teaching where a student has received a message of bullying and they need to be excused to go to the bathroom to recover from their emotions because they don't want to show to others that they are hurting from the words that they're sending them. When I was growing up and attending high school, passing notes was a common trend and popular way to bully others. All of us were involved with passing notes, and not necessarily in the way of bullying, but just as a way to communicate with each other during classroom instruction. However, with cyberbullying, that has become more of a threat than through note passing because notes stay in the classroom, but with the technology, the cell phone, Comments about an individual can be seen by thousands online in a matter of seconds. As I've interacted with my nieces and nephews, they've shown me multiple videos of individuals making fun of other people and showing it all for humor. And it seems to me that social media is promoting rude behavior as a positive practice and a way to be popular among teenagers that it's okay to make fun of each other or the way you look or the way you talk as long as it's all in humor and good fun. And as we all know, this is not true. And unfortunately, the rising generation is being taught these things over and over again through various ways of media on their cell phones. As mentioned a few moments ago, it's difficult for a teacher to stay focused when they're disciplining a student with their cell phone. In a study that was conducted in 2015, 76% of teachers were issuing verbal warnings to students. I found myself as a teacher repeatedly warning students to stay focused during the lesson. During um, doing this interrupts the flow of the lecture and frustrates students who are actually behaving well in class and paying attention. Several months ago, I had a young man in my class that was constantly trying to distract this girl that sat next to him by asking her to look at his phone and laugh at his jokes. The girl eventually, after a few days, approached me and asked if she could be moved to a different seat. I had no idea of what distraction this was causing for her, as it appeared to be all in good fun, um, but behind the scenes, she was really annoyed by it and wanted me to to move her seat and I'm just so glad that there are students out there that find cell phone use to be distracting and annoying while they're trying to learn in class and it's not always something that is entertaining to them but rather a distraction. Unfortunately, cheating has been a temptation for students throughout time. The methods that students have used to cheat have been more complex as the years go by. For example, in a study done in 2011, the researcher indicated that students are now taking water bottles into the classroom and writing the answers of the test on the label of the water bottle. And when I was in high school, teenagers would not do this in such a complex manner. You know, write on their inside of their hands or their arms, and they would 
bring these cheat sheets with them to help them, you know, know all the answers to the test or the quiz. Now, however, though, with the use of cell phones, cheating has become more accessible. In a research that was done in 2013, the Researchers found that 65.2% of the students were using their cellular devices to cheat in class. These researchers asked students if they were aware that cheating was going on in the classroom, and 65% of the students stated that they were aware. Obviously, not all cell phone use in the classroom is negative and destructive in the learning environment. Although most research has shown that cell phone use is inhibiting students in their learning process, there's also been evidence of benefits in the classroom. For example, in 2015, there was a survey conducted of a little over a thousand teachers where they indicated that the number one benefit of having cell phones in the classroom was access to the internet. The teachers also indicated that texting helped support them in their communication between each other and their students and also the content of the class. Another research was conducted in 2013 and it surveyed 33 students and of those 33 students, 25 of them completed a survey in class using their cell phone. They also reported that the cell phone helped their learning, it was not a distraction, and helped them enjoy class and promoted their success. Further, research has been conducted where researchers stated that cell phones help instructors with personalizing instruction and giving students the opportunity to self-regulate learning. Cell phone cameras have also been a benefit and helps in their process of collecting data and scientific visualization and communication. As beneficial as cell phones are, one must consider and evaluate the fact that there is a disparity between teachers and the use of cell phones. Obviously, teachers are very concerned for the learning process of their students and how texting is disrupting that process. And most teachers have mixed feelings about the use of cell phones in the classroom. One student may have a teacher that does not care if they use their cell phone during class and another teacher that bans cell phones during their lecture. I have found that this is very true when I've seen this in my profession. It's always been a mix with every location that I've been at and teaching and working that some teachers feel really strongly one way whereas other teachers really don't mind and are fine with just verbal warnings and then they just kind of ignore the cell phone use after a few weeks. I have observed in the last six years of teaching that monitoring cell phone use can become a burden while teaching. Several teachers have expressed to me that they would rather teach than have to quote babysit their students. Every teacher has a different approach to how they help students pay attention during class, but the difficulty of maintaining a learning environment in the classroom has inspired teachers to take different steps in controlling cell phone use. This chart that you see is an example of a range of policies that faculty members have conducted in the classroom. As noted, most teachers are extending verbal warnings to their students and the vast majority of instructors do include cell phone use in their classroom. This study also indicated that students feel grade reductions and the removal of the cell phone from the class as the most effective policies to deal with cell phone destruction. The researchers found as well that longer classes and larger enrollments of students motivate students to use their cell phones as opposed to other situations. They found that smaller class sizes and more group work help eliminate the use of cell phones in a classroom. In the extensive research that I have done for this topic, I have found that there is not a clear policy that has been effective for a classroom setting with teenagers. There are many teachers that have their own philosophies and what they feel are right, but there is no policy that has actually been effective in eliminating negative use of cell phones. And so therefore, I, I believe that a policy to advise teachers to limit the use of cellular devices in the classroom is highly recommended. 
Some aspects of cellular devices can be useful, as we mentioned earlier. Another example of some usefulness was found in a research conducted by a study that was done in 2015, where researchers discussed that the internet was a means of helping students have a better academic performance. They also found that Facebook was an effective tool in reminding students of upcoming events. As seen in this research, there are benefits to certain aspects of cellular use, but they can also have a negative effect, as stated earlier. A clear policy needs to be in place on appropriate use of mobile devices and consequences for their muses, misuses during instruction so that teachers across America can benefit from the use of cell phones instead of feeling aggravated by the use of cell phones.